My friends, after another terrible night's sleep in the van, oh my God, it's just so hot, it's so muggy. The overnight low temperature was 75 degrees. I'm in Delaware. They call it the first state because it was the first state to ratify the Constitution in 1787. So 1776, that's what we all know, the Declaration of Independence. That's when, you know, we started the Revolutionary War to get away from England, but it wasn't until 11 years later that we really formed up the government of the United States of America. And then it took another four years before the Bill of Rights was introduced. That's what you really think about when you think about the Constitution. You think about the First Amendment, the freedom of speech. You think about the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. You think about the Fourth Amendment. Nobody can come in and search your stuff unlawfully. You think about the Fifth Amendment. I plead the Fifth. I'm not going to uh, incriminate myself on a stand. And then uh, Third Amendment is something about troops being quartered in your house. And, you know, we should all know the Bill of Rights. I have to go to Wikipedia to, to brush up on a few more of those. But think about that. That was another four years later. So it wasn't 15 years after 1776 till we kind of started to form up what America is today. And of course, the Constitution is always evolving. There's cases with the Supreme Court all the time of saying, nope, this is this and this is that. And all of these are kind of interpreting the Constitution, that document that has lasted forever. And, uh, Every single country in the world has a constitution and almost all of them, I think all of them have a bill of rights that says freedom of speech, you know, freedom of religion, even North Korea, even communist China, all these places have their total phony baloney document of the constitution. But we have the real one because we go by it and we try to uphold it as best as we can. My little magnet map that has been so good so far is uh, kind of failing me right now where Pennsylvania, New Jersey is attached to Delaware and so is Maryland. So ah, maybe I'll get out the X-Acto knife and cut it apart. Hopefully after this ride, I'll be able to get a little nap or something because the sleep is the most important thing. During a pandemic, you gotta get your sleep. That's what fights this whole thing off and the old vitamin D, getting the sun. I've been getting enough sun, I think, even though it's been overcast, but gotta get that sleep. So out of all the places in the United States or the world, this place, Brandywine Creek State Park, had the most people ever email me. I had to have at least 30 people email me about this place. And I was planning on having a Patreon ride out here. That kind of fell apart with the virus and everything. But luckily, O'Neill here was the very first person to email me about this place like two years ago, 2008, or no, 2018, yeah, it wasn't, 12 years ago. He wasn't, <laughs> he was like four years old then. But uh, yeah, so luckily the timing worked out for him to come and show me this place. I was gonna do it all solo because I've been just, uh, the paralysis of just having everyone, letting people down and inviting one person but not inviting another person. It's uh, absolutely brutal. So luckily this worked out and he's gonna show me around. I'm looking forward to it. So this place is about 30 minutes away from Philadelphia, so this is very much the local Philly rider spot. Oh, it's a little humid, my friend. <laughs> I'm kind of used to it now. Yeah. But this first few rides is brutal. Yeah. So O'Neill's only 16 years old, but he has a really nice bike that he bought himself because he has a landscaping business. He takes care of 10 different lawns, has a really nice lawnmower, and hoping to expand the business next year. It's all possible, it's all out there. You just have to hustle, especially if you're a kid. All you have is time. If you wanna detail cars, cut lawns, pressure wash, there's all these things out there that you can hustle that adults like me don't wanna do and are willing to pay good money to have them taken care of. Yeah, I would say this is 100% humidity. I think that's a safe, safe bet as much moisture in the air <laughs> as possible without a cloud being formed in front of you. Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> Took me a second to eyeball that. Whoa. <laughs> he warned me about that. <laughs> A lot of marks on that tree. 
<laughs> Ooh, yeah. A little bit of Rotorua out here. <laughs> oh man, just hero dirt enough to get a little grip and all these flat corners. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh. <laughs> I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to let off a little, get some momentum. Nope. <laughs> I'd not like to put my head through a tree. I need to wear a bib to make sure the sweat doesn't drip on the camera lens like a cone that a dog would wear. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> the easiest one's that way. Uh-huh. First to our left. What's well, the hardest one? Right that, straight. On the right, or okay, over the log thing. Oh, wow. Okay, I have no idea where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see something. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> Yeehaw. Is this where Joe Biden lives? Yeah. <laughs> Is that his bunker? <laughs> Said they redid this trail and then there was a big rainstorm right after kind of washed a ton of the work away <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> Oh, the gap jump. I'm good. Yeah, that was worth it. That was cool. Yeah. Got some cool speed going. Oh, man. Take the gloves off for a second. It's like, I don't want to put those things back on. Disgusting. Full soakage. Okay, we're back to that rock line. Try the easy side. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That's a challenge. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, well, there goes the spoke. We were talking about the heat and the humidity and O'Neill's like, yeah, he's getting the real experience. Wow. I'll roll it. <laughs> this is Technar, the most technical descent. Oh, nice. <laughs> Beat him to the whole shot. <laughs> that sounded like my frame cracking. Woo, yeah. Man. Ha <laughs> ha. That was smooth, dude. You did really good. <laughs> wow.
got randomly thinking about the Declaration of Independence and the Revolutionary War and how everything's illegal unless you prove it, unless you win, then it's legal. <laughs> if you beat everyone back, start your own thing, hey, all of a sudden, this is the way it goes now. I forget what they called it with the Civil War as well, where it's like a trial by war. Like, yeah, if you win the war, <laughs> whatever you say goes. The most controversial thing ever is might makes right. It doesn't mean it's really right. <laughs> It doesn't mean what Communist China does to all their ethnic minorities is right, but via their law, however they are able to manage it and for all of us to ignore it, it's right. If you keep doing it and you're getting away with it, I guess it's right. I'm sorry to interrupt your mountain biking with a little bit of thinking. <laughs> It's a lot of climb, then foom, climb, foom. Big, short, steepers making use of the elevation. <laughs> I should really weigh myself before these rides. I do not have a scale, though. <laughs> cool breeze is the best part. <laughs> Victory! I've been rung dry. How was it? That was cool, man. That was some good stuff. I like the later half the best. That was good. Oh boy, here we go. Dry, baby, dry. I have a lot of different shirts and shorts and stuff, but it's, it's not good to go on a big stretch where I'm probably not gonna have uh, closed washing facilities. But I could fill up the sink and do a little uh, laundry in the sink, which is always a possibility and just gotta make sure it dries. And these shorts have been drying really, really fast recently. The, the shirt, not so much. I think it takes a lot longer. This stuff's been drying good. The knee pads take a little longer. <sighs> not too bad though. <laughs> Wash them while they're drying. One thing I've I haven't been doing a great job in the van of keeping the shoes in one area. It's like once you start walking around in your shoes, you're getting all kinds of stuff inside the van. And that is the number one thing people tell you like, oh, you're never going to keep it clean. It's never going to stay clean. Well, guess what? I kept it clean because I like being a neat freak. Spray it down, wipe it down, sweep it up, vacuum it. It takes all of three minutes to do it. And you're like, oh, wow, it's not all dirty and dingy in here. So the number one thing I forgot when I started this leg of the road trip was my little sunscreen things that totally block out the light. And also they make it so I can roll this up and have the AC blasting while still being incognito because there's a silver foil side and then there's a black side. So if you're parking in a Walmart parking lot or even a hotel parking lot and you face the black side out, I think people kind of probably just dismiss it or walk by it and maybe not notice. If you have the foil side out, then it's like, oh yeah, there's someone inside there, there's something going on. So biggest regret for the past few nights is not having those because I could block everything out, run the AC all night long with the car because it is, oh, it's something else. It is uh, quality of life is uh, not good at the moment, but 
I'm just gonna keep on keeping on. I am surviving. Looks like we finished up just in time. The rain is coming down. Thank you once again, O'Neill, for the guiding. That was a sweet ride. Here we go. Ride, edit, sleep, drive, repeat. Or is it drive, ride, edit, sleep, repeat? I don't know, whatever it is, I'm gonna keep this thing going. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail. Thank you.